This video is going to teach you how to make use of Python modules or packages and how to install new modules into a cloned Conda environment. And if that sounds like a lot of word spaghetti, we're going to define those things as we go through the lesson. Let's start with how to use packages or modules. So when you launch Jupyter Notebook, from the icon in your start menu, the shortcut to Jupyter Notebook, right here. This brings you to what's called a def the, the default environment for ArcGIS Pro Python. How do you know you're in the default environment when this loads? Well, one way to tell is that it's putting you in a directory that is pretty high level on your computer. You're seeing the folders that you see that go into C colon backslash users backslash your username. Um, and then you have access to almost your entire computer here. If we load a new notebook, I think I've said before that Python, like the just the generic basic core um, installation of Python, it has dozens, maybe hundreds of uh, functions, but it doesn't have everything. It travels pretty lightweight. And if you want to expand that functionality, you need to bring in other modules or packages. Let's just get an example. You might think that Python would be able to evaluate the sine of 90. But sine is not a function that Python has in its core uh, installation. So we need a module and there's a number of modules that travel along with the basic installation of Python called the standard library. And one of those standard modules is the math module. We can get at it, we can bring it into our script by using the import command. So it's import and then the module's name. If I run math.sign, of 90. I'm telling it to use the function sign that lives in the math module. And now I have something that it may not look familiar because there's probably a pi in there, pi over two, but um, at least I get an answer. It knows what math.sign is. Uh, we could get a little fancy from that. We could do um, from math import sign. That allows me to use sign without the math prefix. This is kind of considered bad form. Um, and we could talk about that in class, maybe why. Uh, we could, from math, import everything. And then we could say use cosine without um, any prefix. We could import math with a nickname. We could say import math as goofy. And then we could do goofy dot sign of 90. And that works too. So, but basically the key concept I want to get across here is that import is the command that brings in, sort of wakes up and introduces a new set of functions associated with this module into the current script. Um, there are modules we don't have right now. Like we don't have, um, I think I tried this before. I think we don't have a module called Beautiful Soup 4. Okay, so it can't find Beautiful Soup 4. Um, and the standard library of four, that comes with Python, it has, you know, dozens, plenty of modules, but it doesn't have everything. Uh, there are all kinds of people all over the world writing Python modules, and most of them wind up in a package management system called Conda. And C-O-N-D-A, you can Google that and learn more about it. But Conda does two things and it does them well. It helps you install packages, and it helps you install packages to what are called environments. I think the best way to understand environments will go visit our environments in ArcGIS Pro. So for now, let me close this. 
and close the thing that launched it and go to ArcGIS Pro. Um, we want the project tab and then we want the Python option. And this page helps you manage your, it's an interface with Conda. It helps you manage your uh, installed packages. So the first thing we should look at is the list of installed packages in our default environment. This ArcGIS Pro Pi 3 is our default environment. And this is the list of all the packages that we can get at without um, adding anything. It's pretty long. I'm going to highlight a few as I go through and kind of tell you some that I find useful. Um, I use a lot. Um, I use Matplotlib a lot. That's for making graphs. NumPy is for doing like more advanced math. You can do some linear algebra in it. Pandas is gorgeous. Pandas uh, turns Python into like R or Excel. It allows you to work in a data frame and handle your data in labeled columns. Um, it makes it much easier to get at things. Uh, um, what's another one I use a lot? SciPy is for scientific computing. There's a lot of sub-modules, like the sub some sub-modules for SciPy are very useful. Uh, okay, so those are those are some installed modules. The update packages will obviously update them. I'm not going to update them now. It takes a while. If you feel like updating yours, you could just pause the video and try it. Um, and then we have add packages. Add packages is all the stuff you don't have that you might want. So I might, I said I might want beautiful soup. I think I can search here. Um, I can go to beautiful soup. And the thing I notice is that the install button is grayed out. In fact, for all of these, the install button is grayed out. And if we hover over that install button, it tells us why. You cannot modify the default Python environment. Clone and activate a new environment. That's because they don't want you to mess up the default. What winds up happening is when you install a package. That package has dependencies. There are other packages whose commands it uses. And sometimes packages are fussy about what version they get. So it might be that I install one of these and it needs um, NumPy 2.18. And my NumPy is 2.12. I don't even know. Um, I install the package. It updates my NumPy. The package works fine, but I had another package somewhere that was counting on having the older version of NumPy, and now I've broken it. So that's the reason they don't allow you to edit your default environment. What an environment basically is, is a collection of packages. So you can clone, using this Manage Environments button, you could clone your default environment and then work in the clone, which is what we're going to do. Um, but cloning takes a while, and again, that might be something you want to do, pausing the video and then resuming. I can just switch to the cloned environment here by clicking its radio button. Now down the bottom, restart ArcGIS Pro for your environment changes to take effect. I think that's only like once you clone and you want the clone to show up. I'm pretty sure that I can just switch between active environments um, while without restarting. And by the way, if, if you install a package and it doesn't show up, close ArcGIS Pro, load it again, it probably will show up. So now if you look up here, you see that I'm no longer in the default, I'm in the clone. And it's going to show me the packages that I have installed in the clone. And oh, well, it tells me in the clone I do have beautiful soup. Okay, so I won't add that one. Um, let me find something to add for practice. Let's see what looks like, you know, possibly something I would not mind having. Um, what have I used before? I think I have Fiona already. Let me see if I have Fiona. 
Must have that already. Um, I have GeoPandas, yes. How about HTML? No. Here, I'll just pick one I like the name of. How about Blinker? I have no idea what it does. Package details are not available. I will install the package called Blinker and hope that I can get it to install. So let's use the install button. And I agree to the terms and conditions. I really haven't read these, but I think what they say is if you mess up your own environment and something really expensive was depending on it, Esri's not responsible. Up here, you see the dependencies. Now, this happens to be a module that doesn't have terribly many dependencies. It just has a minimum version of Python. But this is where you would see what packages are going to get changed when you add in the new package. So we say install. It installs. Okay, and now when I go to my installed packages in the clone, Blinker shows up. So I should, in theory, be able to launch this cloned environment and um, load Blinker, import Blinker. Okay, so let's close this. Actually, before I close that, I'm going to copy this location. Can I do that? I can't click in here? Oh, all right, I guess I can't. All right. So let's close this. Now, to load Jupyter in that new cloned environment, I don't want to use the shortcut. I don't want to use this Jupyter Notebook shortcut. I want to use the Python command prompt. This is actually what you're seeing, um, but it flashes by really fast. And it loads with the environment active that was the last one it saw in um, ArcGIS Pro. If you wanted a different one, you can use the activate command. Activate, and then you'd have to type or copy and paste the colon backslash users backslash da, 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 with the environment that you want. Suppose you don't know what environment you want. Well, one thing that's nice about Conda is that if you make a mistake and you type something ridiculous, it almost always, the error message almost always gives you a hint at what might have been useful for you to use. So in this case, if I didn't know what my available environments were, I could try conda info dash dash evs. And that tells me all of the environments that um, I could possibly be using. Just for kickers, I could activate this one, copy it, and say activate, and then paste it. I mean, I don't need to do this because it's already active, but it doesn't hurt anything. Okay, it just changes. I think it changes my cursor. Okay, so once I'm in the environment I want, meaning I'm going to have available the packages that I want, I can launch Jupyter Notebook from here. And the first thing to know, the first thing that lets you know you're in alien territory is that this list of directories has changed. These are no longer um, sort of your root directories that you're used to seeing. Th this is the crap that's buried all the way in app data, backslash local, backslash Esri, et cetera. Um, and so any scripts you write, you can store them in the scripts folder if you want. But if you want to put them on your desktop or on a thumb drive and take them with you, you need to dig your way into this directory through your file structure to fetch them again. I don't believe there's any way to go up from here. And again, that's another another protective thing um, because sometimes there's some scripts that you are running, maybe that you downloaded from the internet, and you really don't want it to have access to, you know, backwards access all the way up your file structure. Might be a virus or something. So let's start a new notebook here. Okay. 
I hope I can import Blinker and it imports. Okay. Um, I've been having some trouble with beautiful soup. I saw that it was there. Maybe I'm not setting it right. I just want to see if it will load. No, still can't find beautiful soup. There's some reason I can't get beautiful soup. If you wanted to know what modules you do have, you can type help And you'll see that I use the terms packages and modules interchangeably. I kind of think that when it's out there in on the internet and in your directory structure, it's a package. But then once it's here in the script, it's a module. Um, it takes a while, but it'll give you a list of all the modules that you have available to you in this environment. So in this particular environment, these are all the modules I could be using. And I, I do think, because I checked before, that Beautiful Soup does not show up on this list, which means I must have done something wrong. Maybe I closed the program too soon when I was installing it the last time. But anyway, here's a whole bunch of uh, modules that are available. And that is about all you need to know right now about modules and packages and conda environments.